Good morning, Growing Faith Kids. This is Miss Cindy here, and I want to welcome you to our lesson today for our Growing Faith student ministry. I want to take a moment just to say that I have missed each one of you so very much, uh, seeing your smiling faces and giving hugs, but soon we will be able to just enjoy one another in person, and we will be able to give hugs and high fives and all of that good stuff. Our lesson today is entitled Fast Faith. The bottom line is that we truly need to live what we believe. Our objective today is that we will learn that God calls us to actually live out our faith. So for it not to be just a faith that we talk about, but it, for it to be a faith that we live and for other people to be able to see our faith in action. Our lesson today will be found in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, and this is where Jesus calls the first disciples. So you will want to, if you have a Bible, to grab that so that you can have that handy and you can read along as I read to you. And also the verses will be shown on the screen as well. Our memory verse today is found in John chapter 4, verse 14, and I'll go ahead and read that for you now. But anyone who drinks the water that I give them will never be thirsty. In fact, the water I give will become a spring of water in them, and it will flow up into eternal life. And again, that was John chapter 4, verse 14. I want to start by just uh, giving you a short summary of what we'll be talking about today. At McDonald's, the customers at McDonald's often say this catchy little phrase, and you may already know it. The catchy phrase is, I'm loving it. For those who have put their faith in Jesus, we can rejoice and we can love it too, knowing that we are saved by God's grace. But in addition to loving it, God wants us to share the joy that we have found in him with others as well. We do that when we actually live out or live it and treat others with kindness, love, and truth the way that Christ did. Let's pray a simple prayer today. Dear God, help us to live out our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A few of the items that you'll need for today's lesson, again, I stated if you have a Bible, that would be great for you to grab that so that you can follow along as I read. And if not, that's okay as well. Uh, you can just listen as I read. You will also need a uh, paper bag, which this is just a bag that I was able to get from Kroger. So it doesn't have to be any type of special bag, but just some type of paper bag if you have it. This can also be a bag that you have gotten if you have recently, or your parents rather, have recently purchased any kind of fast food. So it could be a McDonald's bag or Burger King or Chick-fil-A is one of my favorites. So any of those bags will work. And if all else fails, if you don't have a bag, that's okay. Just grab a white sheet of paper and that will work as well because we want to be flexible. So let me ask a question. Do you know why McDonald's, Burger King, and all the other fast food places put their names and logos all over their bags, the wrappers, their cups, and even their napkins? Do you know why? It's all about advertising. Just like the catchy commercials that tell us, I'm loving it, all this packaging is about giving other people a craving and a want for McDonald's food. You see the golden arches on a bag in someone's hand or when they throw it away in the trash or even on the ground. And when the, ha the next Happy Meal comes, you think, hey, I'm really loving this McDonald's. Let's go and get a Happy Meal or let's enjoy the Happy Meal. Jesus wants us to be loving him and he wants us to do it by living for him. We can do that by loving other people. We do it by serving at church and also away from church. We do it by giving generously to those that are in need. We live for Jesus every time we lend a listening ear or a helping hand. 
We live for Jesus by friending those that may not have any friends and by showing love and respect to each and every person that we meet or we come in contact with. If we truly love God, then we will live for him. We will put our faith into action by sharing the love of Jesus with others. And let's show God our love by learning to live for him every single day of our lives. Again, the bottom line is that we need to live out what we believe in our hearts. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive right into our lesson. For better or for worse, we all have eaten fast food at some time uh, in our lives. Fast food restaurants making, make eating out on the run or eating in a hurry very convenient. We just pull right into the drive-thru and place our order and they give us our food and we drive off, as long as we pay, of course because they do make it very affordable as well. No matter where you are and no matter what time it is, there's a fast food place nearby that's ready to serve you no matter what time of day it is or again, where you live, fast food is always available. Fast food restaurants are there for breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, late night snacks, anytime that you want something to eat, they are open and available. And uh, given what's going on right now, we can even have fast food delivered to us as well. It may not always be the healthiest option, but every now and again, we do have a desire to eat from our favorite fast food restaurant. One reason why we eat more fast food than maybe we should is because of the advertising. Every fast food restaurant has its own marketing campaign to make you want their food. So when you're watching your favorite show on TV, sometimes they'll have an advertisement for McDonald's or other fast food restaurants. And then you think to yourself, wow, I really would like that. And then you go tell your parents. <laughs> One reason why we eat more fast food than what we should again is because of the advertising. They have creative jingles, which are like little songs that we hear, or even coupons in the mail, or ads on TV, all of these types of things to get our attention because they want us to buy their food and enjoy it. In this series, we're going to talk about some of these ads, but we're also gonna talk about how we can go deeper in our faith because that's what's most important. We're gonna take some fast food slogans and apply them to help us build a fast faith, just like fast food, get it? Fast food, fast faith. Fast faith is something that is strong and it's ready to act when needed. Just like those fast food restaurants are ready to serve you when you go to the restaurant, our faith needs to be ready to serve others. I'll say that again, our faith should be ready to serve others. That's why we call it fast faith. If we truly love God, then we will be able to put our faith into action. That's what today's message is all about. Are you getting excited? I certainly am. We're going to start with a favorite of almost everyone, the land of the golden arches. And I bet you already know what restaurant I'm talking about or some deem it the home of the Big Mac. Now that probably really told you what restaurant I'll be talking about. The only place that can legally call their kids meal a happy meal, and we know it well, is McDonald's. McDonald's is the undisputed king of the fast food landscape and their slogan, I'm loving it, sums up the feeling many McDonald's fans get when they bite into their favorite McDonald's food. I bet you can tell me or you can discuss it with those that are around you what your favorite fast food is either from McDonald's or maybe you like Chick-fil-A or Burger King. Chick-fil-A happens to be a favorite of mine. So go ahead and take a moment to talk about what your favorite fast food is. And we'll see you back right back in just a moment. Welcome back. I'm so glad that you came back to join us. I'm sure we have, I'm sure if we were asked the question, are you loving God? Most of you would say absolutely without a doubt, yes. 
But what if we asked, are you living it? Are you living for God? Are you living out your faith? The Bible teaches us that if we are loving God, then we are living out our faith. That's the challenge Jesus gave a group of men when he called his first disciples. So let's go ahead and read again. That's Luke chapter five. We're going to start with verse one and we're going to read through verse 11. So here we go. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and they were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered and said, Master, we have toiled all night and took in nothing. But at your word, I will let down my net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking because of so many fish. They signaled to their partners that were in the other boat to come and to help them. Come and help, come and help. And they came and filled both of the boats. So they began to start sinking. So the boats just started sinking under the weight of the fish. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken in. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. I like that. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and they followed Jesus. That is so awesome. I really like that story. I hope you did as well. Jesus ultimately chose 12 men to be his disciples. 12. While one of them betrayed him, the other 11 went on to become the founding fathers of Christ Church. Take a moment and I want you just to guess who that one was that betrayed Jesus. It's not a part of our lesson, but I'm just curious to see if you know. So take a moment and discuss it among yourselves and see if you know what the name of that disciple was. And we'll be right back. So who did you guess? If it was Judas, then you are absolutely right. Again, that's not what our lesson is about today, but I was just curious to see if you knew. And if you didn't, that's okay. <laughs> All of these men loved Jesus and they lived out their faith every single day. They weren't perfect though, just like we're not perfect. They made mistakes and sometimes they fail some of the big tests. But all but one of these 11 men would eventually die wow, because they lived out their faith in the face of persecution. Wow. How did these men live out their faith, you may ask? By simply loving others. Remember that, that catchy phrase, I'm loving it? That's how they lived out their faith, by loving others. By sharing the good news of Jesus with absolutely everyone that they met and came in contact with. They lent a helping hand where it was needed and they friended those who were friendless, just like Jesus did and just like we want you to do. They shared the good news of Jesus with everyone, including the men who imprisoned them and even sentenced them to die. They still shared their faith. Their lives are examples to us of how we should love 
people and show our love for Jesus by loving others. If we love him, then we'll be living out our faith each and every day. You know, people who love McDonald's, they're easy to spot or your other uh, favorite fast food restaurants. They show their love by eating McDonald's like all the time. They always say, let's go to McDonald's. Let's go to McDonald's. Let's go to McDonald's when it's time for them to eat. And you see the empty McDonald's bags in their trash cans too. You see the cool Happy Meal toys that they saved up in their rooms. People who are loving it are living it by eating McDonald's whenever they get the chance. So what does that say about us? Would people be able to tell that you and I are loving Jesus easily? Would they be able to tell pretty easy? Would they spot a Bible if they look through your book bag? Would they find some Christian music that you happen to be listening to maybe on your phone or your computer? More importantly, would they see you loving Jesus by loving others? The Bible tells us that we are saved by grace and it's not by works. But if we are truly grateful for all that God has done, we will show it by living for Christ and loving others the way Jesus loved people and demonstrated his love. There's a scripture in the Bible that says that he demonstrated his love for us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That makes me so excited that I can sing and jump and praise and sing the hallelujah song. So we're gonna pause for just a moment and we're gonna give you an opportunity to sing and dance and shout, but please do come back. I certainly did because God is just that worthy to be praised. Again, 
if we are loving people and loving God, we will demonstrate and show our faith by loving others. We'll volunteer to serve at church and serve sometimes through outside ministries because Jesus was always willing to serve others and we should follow Jesus' example. We will give generously to those who are in need because Christ gave his life for us. We will be a friend to those that are friendless or don't have any friends because Jesus was a friend to so many who others just did not love. That makes me excited. We will turn a deaf ear to gossip and meanness because Jesus was kind and he was loving. And we will defend the weak from bullying because Jesus also did the same. It's one thing to say that you love God and to wear a Christian t-shirt, like I have a pretty cool one on myself, right? Or even to carry your Bible to school. But it's quite another for people to see your love for God through your love for others. Can't say that enough. Let's be Christians and followers of Christ who are so grateful for our salvation, we can't help but love others. Let's thank God daily for sending Jesus to save us and ask God to help us put our love for Jesus into action. As the old song goes, they will know we are Christians by our love. If we truly do love him, we will show it by the way we are living for him. Let's close with a simple prayer before we get into our activity. Dear God, help us to live out our faith each and every day and to demonstrate our love for Jesus by loving others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for hanging with me there till the end. And we have an activity for you today. Okay, so I wanna ask, what is the coolest Happy Meal toy that you have ever gotten? I have one here, and while it may not be a toy, this is a pretty cool book. I like to read, and so whenever there are books and Happy Meals, that gives me an opportunity to read. So like me, you may like books that you get in Happy Meals, or maybe you get another really cool toy that you like to play with. Let's take a moment to play some trivia. This is gonna be real quick. But I wanna ask you, can you name all of the toppings that come on your favorite hamburger? So that may be a Big Mac, it may be a quarter pounder with cheese, it may be a regular cheeseburger, it could be a fish sandwich, it could be a chicken sandwich. What comes on your favorite burger? So we see lettuce, we see tomatoes, pickles. Of course, there's a bun, because what would a burger be or a sandwich be without the bun? And then some of us like ketchup, some of us like mustard, some of us like the secret sauce or the Chick-fil-A sauce. So there's all kinds of toppings that you can put on your favorite burger. Okay, remember in the beginning, I asked you to get a paper bag. So if you will grab your paper bag, um, if you have one or if you don't have a bag, you can simply just grab a white sheet of paper. That will do as well. And I'm so sorry, I did not ask you to grab, but I'll ask you to do it now, either crayons or markers or some type of colored pencils. And we're gonna go ahead and use those materials to complete today's activity. So I'll give you a moment to grab those. Okay, great, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. What we're gonna do is we're going to take this bag and we are going to draw our own McDonald's logo. Now, what Miss Cindy did, I took a moment to get onto the internet and find an example of McDonald's logo. I was able to find one, but I was not able to successfully draw it better well, very well, that is. But I know that you can do a great job with drawing a McDonald's sign. So that's what I want you to do on one side of your paper or your paper bag. Just go ahead and draw the McDonald's logo. On the other side of the bag, and I did do this, I want you to write out, I'm living it on the bag. And that is to remind us that we are to learn to live out our faith in everything that we do. So I will show you mine. Ta-da! It simply states, I'm living it. 
to remind me that I am living out my faith. So again, on one side, we're going to draw the McDonald's logo. And remember their slogan was, I'm loving it. And then on the other side, we're gonna write out, I'm living it to remind us that we are to live out our faith. Okay, students, as we wrap up our lesson today, I wanna show you one more thing, and this is just to remind us of what our memory verse is, okay? This says, and I'm gonna read it for you, our memory verse, which is, but anyone who drinks the water I give them will never be thirsty. In fact, the water I give them will become a spring of water in them it will flow up unto eternal life. Again, that's John 4 and 14. And there's a really cool picture of a hamburger on here to remind us to live out our faith. Well, thanks so much again for joining us today. We are so excited to have you here and to present and have you participate in our student ministry lesson for growing faith. We are so excited to uh, be participating uh, with you and just ask that you would be reminded to live out your faith as you go throughout your week. Well, we love you and we want you to have an absolutely great rest of the day with your family and have a great week. We'll see you next time. Yay!